Uh, the new album, Earth Infernal, is out very soon. In fact, it's out on April 1st. Mm. It's no joke. Da, 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 da. Um, what can you tell me about the title of this album? Um, the title is about um, the planet burning, basically. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's no title track on the album, but there's a couple of songs uh, that refer to the title track. Yeah. On the album. Um, we, we sort of observed over the last couple of years that uh, especially in this country that um, people were becoming so obsessed with um, the pandemic and politics like silly politics yeah that uh, people were forgetting the fact that that was still going on <laughs> so we just thought we'd remind them <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's not something to ignore so probably yeah. best that we have a reminder about it yeah um yeah, so, but it's cool though, it's uh, more of an umbrella term when it comes to the actual music on this album, or the actual songs on this album, I should say. Um, like you say, several tracks relate to the title. Yeah, there's a couple of tracks there, Earth We Retreat and Twelve Infernal Lords, there's two tracks that refer to what that's about, you know. Okay. Earth We Bequeath is uh, kind of like a time capsule message for the future generations. All right. After we're not yet uh, sort of apologizing for what we've done. <laughs> <laughs> and what assholes we are for not sorting it out. <laughs> and, uh, there's another one on the album, 12 Infernal Lords, and that's kind of like a horror story, but it's um, the idea is like a Supreme Court made up of like 12 judges that are like sort of demons, you know, like the guy that was in our uh, artwork. All right. Um, they're hell bent on destroying the environment by using the law to plant seeds of like mistrust and chaos. So yeah. using using laws to make uh, or bending the law to to fuck the planet up, kind of thing. Mm. I'll tell you what, Satan can't get away from courts, can they? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's a little thing. It's all about justice. Yeah. Cool. Um, and at first. Um, listen for well, the first listen that anyone's had of the album is of course uh the single burning portrait which is a really cool song it's really kind of dark and gritty and i think it conveys the the message that you were uh, talking about with the album title very, very well uh sonically it's, actually, it's a different story altogether that one but yeah. it does kind of link in mm. to the same kind of things that we're talking about you know uh, yeah it's Burning Portrait, it's like the second half of, of um, a two-song story. The, okay. first, the first is Ascendancy, and then Burning Portrait's the second half of the story. Mm. Um, in Ascendancy, it's kind of a, it's about any kind of high-powered individual. I mean, really, politicians, industrial tycoons, that kind of person. Yeah. Although it still could be about a movie star. A sports star, a rock star, any anybody like that that has like um, ambition, and um, on their rise to the top, they have uh, a lot of um, good intentions and optimism and um, ideals that they want to perceive when they when they get there. Mm. And by the time they get there, and they're on the decline, they realise that everything that all their optimism and everything's turned into cynicism, and and you know it's the all the, their beliefs have changed because they've followed the money or whatever, you know. Yeah. Other people or to, to get the way they were. Okay. I could, uh, for, at first it sounded like it could very well be a good swiper, um, Mike Ashley, but then I've realised he's got no morals in, to begin with, so. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get that in there. Um, but what, but what I meant was in terms of conveying the uh, message of the album title is that, like I said, musically the song is very dark and it, it has that kind of, um, I don't want to say cynicism, but it's got that, um, I don't, I can't remember the word right now, but e either way, it it's definitely reflects or gives the message that this is going to be a heavier album than maybe mm. we're used to with Satan before. Mm. I was really quite sort of um, taken aback by it when I heard it. I was like, wow, that's fucking gritty, man. That's cool. That's... Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so what would you say separates uh, Earth Infernal from Cruel Magic? Ooh, uh, I think um, we, we kind of get on threads when we're, when we're writing, you know, like, uh, and maybe even mood could be a thing when, when we're writing music and lyrics and stuff. You know, like, uh, I suppose really when we wrote Cruel Magic, those were happier times for us. Mm-hmm. And this one, this one, a lot of the lyrics anyway were written during the pandemic. Yeah. So the pandemic for us was a nightmare because we like to be out playing live and doing our thing, you know. Yeah, and of course. Yeah. Although it gave us more time to sort of tweak the album and tweak the songs and, and that, I think, yeah, we were, we were in a bit of a downer, so maybe that comes across a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were on a high when we did uh, Crew Magic, you know, because that was the band were right on ascendancy, as it were. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I think maybe there's a little bit of that. Um, mm. I think when we did when we made Crew Magic, it was the first album where we really just let loose with everything, you know, and not made any restrictions or uh, curtailed any ideas that we had. Mm. So I think this one as well is even more progressive than the last one. It's, um, there's a lot of uh, little things, little parts of the music and the way that we've written it and uh, the way we're trying to come across that are different to, to a, or other material that was maybe on Life Sentence was more like a straightforward metal album, you know? Yeah. And uh, we're try- when, we wrote, when we did Life Sentence, when we wrote the music for that, especially the music, we, we tried to write a follow-up to Courtney Act. And I think now we're just on a roll where we are who we are now, rather than trying to look back at being when we were kids, you know? Yeah. Now, Satan's a really interesting band in that regard, and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but um, before that, I'd like to ask a little bit about the recording process. Um, how was it to record this? Were you able to get together, or did you all have to do this separately? Um well, we, we knock about a few ideas around and we send demos around and stuff and then uh, eventually we get the songs the way we want them and then we have, uh, this time we didn't do, get a lot of rehearsal in at all, mainly just guitars and drums and, uh, and we decided to record it like that. Yeah. So it was just basically put down with the drums and the guitars. They're the, they're the two things that really drive the band. So that's what they need. It's weird because a lot of bands say it's the bass, the bass and the drums, mm. but uh, with this band it works. It's the riffs and the, the drummer that drives the band, you know. Okay. And uh, so we put the bass on afterwards, which was a bit weird. But uh, we started it in October 2020. Okay. And we got a couple of backing tracks down, and then we went into the second lockdown. And uh, so then it was stopped for over the Christmas period. In yeah. the, and then by the time it was, the studio reopened and we were able to go back in, our engineer was really poorly. So he, he was really sick and um, he had to go in for some serious surgery and stuff like that. So okay. that held us back. And even though we had like, we had a deadline of um, October the 21st to finish the album, we just got it done because most of the recording was done in um, September and October of uh, 21, mm-hmm. which was basically a year later. And even though the album basically took us, if you if you add up the time in uh, hours or weeks or whatever, it would have been about three weeks' work. It basically took a year to complete because of all the... Our mm-hmm. bass player um, broke his elbow, Graham Boat broke his elbow, and um, he was out for a few months. And uh, in the middle of the recording in September, October, I, I got COVID. So that was another couple of weeks out. <laughs> it was just like, it's almost like um, being called Satan. It kind of curses us because every time we try to do something, something tries to stop us. <laughs> we seem to succeed, but it's always like a, a strain, you know? <laughs> yeah. you got to be the only uh, group of people that, had more luck when you were called Pariah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> well, um, something else uh, that I really like about this album is the artwork. The artwork is uh, once again done by 
uh, Elaran Cantor, I've probably got his name right uh, wrong, but he's a uh, fantastic artist from Israel, obviously. Yeah. And uh, he's done a few albums for you now. And I yeah. think this one is the most um, kind of striking in a way. It's got that kind of mix of sandy and like blood colors. That really comes together very well. Um, what is it about his, his art the, in particular that you think really um, represents Satan very well? Well, we saw we saw his art. He was actually recommended to us when we were saying to Listenable, the first album we did with Listenable, Life Sentence. Okay. Um, the, the boss of the label, Lauren, he said, uh, look, I really love this artist. Will you check out some of his work? And are you interested in using him to do the artwork? So, you know, obviously we had a look at it and he'd, he'd done some work with um, a few bands that we'd heard of, Testament and in particular was one of the great bits of artwork he'd done. Mm. And uh, we thought, yeah, why not? You know, we, we didn't have anyone else in line to give a try. And mm. on the first one, we saw, you know, we're, we're going to have the judge in it, obviously. And uh, we gave him a little idea of what we wanted on the sleeve. Um, and then... When he came back with what, what he'd painted for the first uh, and sketched out and then painted for the Life Sentence album, we yeah. realised that in his description of what he'd done in the artwork, it was just so fantastic. It was actually as interesting as the artwork itself. It was like, wow, he's really thought about every little detail about how he made this album to, to make it like it would be back in the early 80s. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it would be a real certain album artwork in the eighties. It was like yeah. wow, wow. And if, and if I wish, I, I, I suppose we should have put it up on the website or something. You know, like the, his description of what he did because it's so fantastic. Hmm. So by the time we got um, Adam by Adam, we just basically decided that uh, he's the artist. We're musicians, you know, we're not artists. Yeah. So just give him a couple of song titles. So we give him a couple of song titles of the last album and he chose the subject of Adam by Adam because um, it's kind of like about Alzheimer's and having dementia, and, and uh, which is relevant to some of us in the band. <laughs> and it was relevant to him and his fam family. And then he just basically came up with the whole idea for that album from, from his perception of the lyrics, you know? Yeah. And um, again, amazing. So we did the same thing with Cruel Magic. Gave him a couple of song titles and he chose the Cruel Magic and came up with this idea about um, the witches. Mm -hmm. And uh, even though that we do, Cruel Magic wasn't particularly about witches, you know, it was like the whole idea of what people think magic is and kind, kind of thing. And, you know, and, and mm -hmm. people being destroyed for trying to be creative kind of thing and then uh, yeah. the new album again sent him uh, uh, the title just we had the title be rather than a song and then told him that the, what the title was supposed to portray and that's that was the piece of artwork he came up with and yeah. it's you just you couldn't better it you know really it's just fantastic it's, no, it's, it's exactly what we were thinking of yeah, and he's got this amazing talent, you know, just for tapping into the messages behind music. Yeah. He, he is he a real talent. He doesn't just paint a picture he, and, and make an album sleeve that's that's a great sleeve. Yeah it's, yeah. it's got, like, some meaning to it and purpose and everything. It's it's so fantastic. Yeah, and what I like about the work he's done for Satan in particular is that, like you say, it could very well be the sort of art you would have used back in the 80s. Mm. But it doesn't look dated at all you know there's a lot of bands now that are playing like old school heavy metal and they feel like the artwork has to look like it's come bang out of 1982 yeah whereas yeah. this it reflects the roots very well but it's it, it, it really does portray uh satan as as is now yeah and uh as as i mentioned before satan is a really interesting band because i think you're probably one of the very few bands that have done better or uh, been more prolific in like the second or the third run than in your initial run yeah that's crazy that's really yeah. is i mean it's kind of like unfinished business because we should never have split up in the first place mm. it was we're kind of led 
because we were young, we were led by what people were saying about us at the time, which was, you know, uh, really we should have stood our guns. And we realise that now, but at least we're getting the second bite of the cherry as we were, you know. And we're fulfilling all the, the little dreams that we had when we were kids, you know, about places yeah. to go and things to do. And so it's good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think, uh, you know, there's so many bands from that sort of time that reunited or um, you came back for one show here and there or whatever. And they might have done another album, but it's, it's never the same. But with Satan, there's so much more to offer on every album you've done since returning. You know, it's it's yeah. what, like a, it sounds like I'm kissing your ass, and I promise you I'm not doing it <laughs> on purpose. But... We know that, we know that just as well as you, because when we first got back together, we didn't expect to be doing this, you know, not in the slightest. No. 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 When uh, when Lauren uh, from Listenable signed us, he wanted three albums, and we just laughed at him and said, <laughs> we'll give you two, but we're only doing one. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't work out. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, it's great, though, you yeah. And uh, obviously Satan is one of those bands that kind of gets lumped in with the new wave of British heavy metal movement or tag, whatever um, label applies best to it. Um, how do you feel about the new wave of British heavy metal? Do you feel that's helped Satan sort of in it's been um, linked to these bands or is it? I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe when young kids were getting going on the internet, you know, in uh, the early 2000s and looking for that sort of music, we were linked to it and that's how they found us again. Because yeah. I think we, we've basically been reborn by young kids looking back into the past and, and having yeah. a rummage around to see what was there. You know? Yeah. And so it's definitely helped us being linked to it by, because of that, that fact. But um, I think it was also our detriment because we didn't fit in at the time. Mm. And um, that's the kind of press we were getting and the reaction we were getting from people, you know, we, we weren't doing the, the same as everyone else kind of thing. Yeah. No, it's, it's interesting. I was talking with uh, Tino from Praying Mantis a couple of weeks ago. And he and obviously Praying Mantis were a band that never really fit in with that uh, type yeah, of yeah. Yeah. or anything. But, you know, he's basically said the same thing, you know, it's just like, it might not be representative of the band, but it's helped gain younger followers and fans over the years. Definitely, yeah. It's, it's like a focal point for them to go back to and have a listen. And there's always going to be some some people that get missed out on, you know, like along the way. In yeah. any kind of genre, in any kind of peak of any kind of music. I, I, I suppose if you trolled through a lot of punk music from the 70s, you'd find some gems that didn't make it as bands, you know, so. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and while I'm, uh, while I've got you, it would be most um, remiss of me if I didn't uh, bring up something else, because of course, Satan isn't the only project or band that you're involved with. You've also got a little band called Skyclad. Yeah, yeah. Which I love Skyclad. I absolutely love Skyclad. And I'm not even that big of a folk metal fan, if I'm honest. Skyclad, Kruokan, and one or two others. That's about it. Um, so what's going on with Skyclad at the moment? I know you've got a show in Dublin later this year with Kruokan. Yeah. Um, um, what other yeah. plans? Oh, sorry. sorry. Sorry, I didn't let you finish there. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. I, was, I was just asking what else Skyclad has in the pipeline other than right. the show in Dublin. We kind of... Uh... We did the same thing. We started writing in lockdown. Obviously, we started writing a new album, and uh, we had some ideas. And I've I've got well enough more music now than to to record an album. Oh, nice. Um, but you, you kind of like we're not in a hurry to do anything anymore. Yeah. When when bands have like um, deadlines and and like being hustled by labels and they have tours to fulfill and stuff like that, it's different. But with Skylight, it's kind of like we just do what we want. So yeah. we've written some stuff. Um, Kev decided to do a project on his own, um, some stuff he wanted to do on his own. And that yeah. was great. I think maybe feeling a bit left out that we're gigging all the time with Satan. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, great, you know. And he, he sort of got 
sidetracked by that, so we mm. haven't actually got to go and put lyrics to the, the music and stuff like that. Okay. But we've got plenty of ideas, and we're, we're, we've started working on them this year to put yeah. together an album. All I can say is like, we, we could end up in the studio in, in the summer, or it could be next summer, because there's no... We, we'll just work on it until we like it, and then, then it'll be done. Yeah, I mean, like you say, not having that uh, restrictions really does yeah. help the band, you know, it, because art is supposed to be a proper expression of that and how you feel. And I feel think that when you put a time limit on art, then it's not as um, as good as it could be. Mm, yeah, in in the in the early nineties, in the nineties, mm. sorry, the whole of the nineties, we released an album every year. Yeah, not many bands can put that out, you know, and. Uh, when you do that, we've got 14 albums out now to come up with anything that, that sounds remotely interesting is quite difficult. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? Without yeah. trying not to repeat yourself, because I can easily write write a, a big piece of music that I think is fantastic and then go, it's the same as that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know? It's, yeah. uh, we've got a lot more scope with Satan at the minute because we, you know, we've got all that hunger in us to do all the stuff we would have done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with Skylad, it's kind of like well, when it comes, when we get the little good, the ideas that are we think are good enough, then we just put them together one by one, and when it makes up the right amount, then we'll go to the studio, and do it like yeah. that. Yeah. Really? We've got a lot of gigs coming in this year, the same as Satan. We're very surprised because at the start of the year we had very little, and it's just they're coming in thick and fast all the gigs. So yeah, we'll be yeah. doing a bit this year. So uh, it's good. It's all good. Absolutely. It's, it's fortunate as well because obviously so many bands have rescheduled tours. So so many clubs and things like that are already booked up so that yeah. you're still able to get uh, offers for both Satan and Skyclad to play live. That's that's fantastic. You know? Yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. I think some maybe some promoters didn't confirm the bands because you have to contract them. So they sort yeah. of put festivals on again this year and went, oh God, get some bands and then they'll get all <laughs> So I think it's a little bit of that as well. But yeah. uh, we've been gutted with Satan because the album comes out on the 1st of April and we had a three-week American tour, which has been cancelled again for the third time. Yeah. So it's a bit, you know, in hindsight, maybe Europe would have been a better idea in April. I don't know, but... But yeah, but then so many uh, European tours have been cancelled as well, so it is yeah. really, really difficult. Yeah. So we've got we've got one a small one planned for October, Europe this year, and then uh, hopefully that will happen, and then probably we'll give it until next March or so. We've got the American tour booked for next April. They like, will rebooked again for <laughs> <laughs> the fourth time or whatever it is. Yeah. It's crazy, so uh, yeah. Just yeah. Let's hope things just go back to normal. Absolutely, and the uh, American tour is that a headlining tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing quite well in the states, it's, which surprised us a lot. But uh, <laughs> yeah, every time we go over, we get a little bit bigger, and the, the gigs get a few more. And if we go to different places, it's great. We're having a good time doing it. Oh, that's really good to hear, man. It really is, you know. And um, I'm gonna have to check out Satan when this when you. And you play live in the UK because I've, I've seen Skyclad, yeah. and and you guys were amazing. And what was funny about that was I had no idea you were playing. I was at the Leandes del Rock Festival in Spain. In ah, 16. yeah, that was a, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, and it was so sort of last minute announcement that I didn't even see the announcement. Yeah, it and was. And just by was happenstance, fun. I said, "Oh, let's go over to the second stage and see what's happening." And I damn near shit myself. I was like, "That's fucking Skyclad, man." That's and we were, were we really low down on the bill. Yeah. Yeah, we went very early. I remember that because that was the wrong positioning as well. It was like, wow. But uh, we wanted to do the show, so, yeah. Yeah. But the people that, that made it over there and were in the, that area, they loved it. I'd never seen yeah, such a positive atmosphere. It was fantastic. Oh, cheers, man. No, no worries. Right, well, I think I've kept you long enough now, Steve. Um Thank you very, very much for taking the time to speak to me. I do appreciate it. Best of luck with the album and, of course, um, the gigs going forward. Oh, it's been a pleasure, Ollie. Cheers, man. Thanks a lot, mate. You look after yourself. Have a good night. You too. Ciao.